In our character studies, we've looked at a few men and women from the Bible. And I hope it's been an interesting study. Tonight, we're not going to look at an individual. We're going to look at people. And they're classified under the heading of a liar. There are liars out there. And we start off with Proverbs chapter 19, verse 22, where the first liar shows up in the Bible. The desire of a man in his kindness. And a poor man is better than a liar. So you can have riches and fame. And be known. And if you are a liar, just be ready to be poor. Wealth doesn't always make the best situation. I told my daughter, I said, I said, don't go after wealth for the career. Go after a career where you can make money, give to God, and have God bless you. Don't get into a career field where you will have to lie. And there are liars out there, and there are known careers and occupations where the person will have to lie to you. To get their necessary business, to get their necessary uh, commission, and to deceive you. Friend, I tell you, it'd be a lot more better in the eyes of God and in the scriptures that you just be a laborer, be a tradesman. Than be of a career where you have to lie. Next one we have is. Proverbs 30 verse 6. Now this is. In the context of Bible. Perversion. Bible correction. When you add or subtract to the word of God. When you erase. When you correct God. And it says like this. Add thou not to his words, the Bible, the scriptures. Least he reprove thee, God, and thou be found a liar. And it's funny because there are many over the years, many women and men who have added to what God has said from the King James Bible for their own modern Bible and made it a simpler tra translation. They made it a better translation. They made it a scholarly translation. They made a translation of all translations. And God says, you're a liar. The absolute final word of God in the English language today is the King James 1611 authorized version of the Bible and there is no other. And if you have taken the King James Bible and you have added to the word, listen, you're a liar. You better be absolutely sure, and I haven't, that when you go to say God says, thus saith the word of God. Now, I'm a street preacher. Used to be. To my health. And there have been times I quoted scripture and I'm like, I don't know if I quoted it right. Because I didn't open up the Bible. And if I, a street preacher, holding the King James 1611 Bible. And if I did not correct that, if I did not quote that word correctly. If I added or subtracted from what God said, I'm a liar. And if you say in the Greek, the better rendering, you're a liar. Every word of God is pure. And you come along and have the authenticity to add. 
and to subtract. Friend, whatever you show up, whether you show up at the judgment seat of Christ or you show up at the great white throne judgment, you're a liar. John 8.54 Jesus answered and says, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honors me, whom ye say that he is your God. And that's not the verse I wanted. John eight forty four. John 8.44 Alright, John 8.44 Ye are of your father the devil. Oh. And he's talking to the scholars in the day of Jesus. He's talking to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. And he says, You are of your father the devil, the lust of your father you do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. There is no dwelling of the devil in truth. Because there is no truth in him. The devil. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So the very fact is, if you're going to lie, you are a liar. And he say, God is my father. But no. The devil's become your father. Because when it came to that lie, you're taking after your, your old nature, Father Christian. You're taking after the devil. Let me give you an example. You got something important coming up. You have to work. You call in sick. You're not sick. You lied. You are a liar. And you take it out to now look at the devil. Look what look what Jesus, who created Lucifer, Jesus says he does not abode in the truth. There is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He is a liar and the father of it. And when you lie. And what liars we've seen already in our study. And if you are a Christian, you have crossed the line and taken on the devil's attribute. Where God is all true. If Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And you stay with the truth. You stay with God. You stay with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And when you cross over to lie for whatever reason, you are a liar. And you are going back to your father, the devil. God is all true. Jesus Christ is all true. Satan is all lies. All lies with no truth, and God has no lies. So you got to think about, hey, who do I represent? Santa Claus is a big lie. Easter Bunny is a big lie. The Tooth Fairy is a big lie. You promoting yourself of who you are not as who you want people to believe you are. You're a liar. You are a liar. Verse 55. Yet ye have not known him, the Father, but I know him. 
And if I should say I know him not, I should be a liar like unto you. <laughs> now look what Jesus, you know, what would Jesus do? you got to be kind. you got to be loving. you got to respect. Jesus said, listen, I'd be a liar just like you. If I made a false accusation, such I do not know the Father, I'd be a liar just like you. Because you know what? He's telling them. You proclaim to know the Father God, you don't know him. You're a liar. There are more religious people out there and religions when they speak. And they may hold a King James Bible. And they get there and say, Thus saith the Lord. They're liars. And they tell a testimony that's not... Listen, I'll tell you right now. I've, heard, I've been in many churches, and I've heard the preachers get up there with their preacher's story. And they've taken that preacher's story, and they applied it to themselves as it happened to them, but it's happened to every preacher. Why don't you just say there was once this preacher, and there was this person, and we learned this part from the story. No, you've got to be a liar, and you've got to put your life into the story. Because you want people to look at you. You want people to see you who you're not. You don't want to have people see you for who you are. And, you know, that's the story. Next place, 1 John 1 8. If we say that we have no sin, and I've dealt with one guy in my life, and I must have went at it with him, and we got to a point almost we were shouting, I had to end it all. But this guy never sinned a day in his life. And he told me I was going to hell because I professed to be a sinner. Saved by grace. If we say we have no sin, and there are people out there who say they have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Well, there's no truth. What is there? If we say we have not sinned, like I said, I dealt with somebody, we make him a liar. We make God a liar and his word is not in us. Because what does the word say? In two testaments, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then when you come up to say, well, I'm not sinned, I never sinned, the Bible says, and I quoted those verses to, oh, no, no, not me. Well, if you are not a sinner, God says you are a sinner. And by saying you're not a sinner, you make God a liar. Oh, that's in a wrong place to be because Jesus, who is God, says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But you turn around to make him a liar. That's interesting. So, chapter 2, verse 4, 1 John. He says, I know him. I know God. I know Jesus. Jesus, my sweet Jesus. I love Jesus. All for Jesus. Keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. That matches John 8, 44 with Satan. Now, we don't, you hear that? That's my cat. We don't keep the commandments for salvation. And yet Paul talks about thou shalt not. 
John gives us a new commandment in, in his epistles to love the brethren. If you go out and kill somebody as a Christian, and then turn around and say, I am a God, I'm a Christian, and you go out, thou shalt kill, you're a liar. Because you disobeyed what God said. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So you say, hey, I'm a King James, I have a believing man, but I don't do it. You're a liar. And you follow towards Satan again, the father, John 8, 44. There are people who profess to be Christian. Uh, they profess God knows them and their lives are a total lie. And you know people like that. And you got to look at them like, you know, we can't judge the salvation. But you look at that person, I don't think so. I met many people like that in the street ministry. Oh, I'm saved. But why are you mad at the preacher preaching the gospel? Oh, I let my light shine. No, what you're saying is you're embarrassed that another Christian's actually standing up preaching what God told us to preach, and you don't do it. That's what you're saying. We are to obey the word of God. And then we can profess to call upon God. Then we can profess that we are saved, we are Christian, by keeping the word of God. And if we don't, we're a liar. Uh, verse 22, I hope. Twenty-two. Who is a liar? That's a good question. With this study, who is a liar? But he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. Well, you know, Jesus is just a wonderful teacher. Jesus was a prophet. Allah is better than Jesus. Muhammad is better than Jesus. We got below and I the angel. Well, you see, Jesus is not God. Jesus was a created being from the beginning. You're a liar. He is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So someone who goes around professing against what the Bible says about Jesus and the position of Jesus, when I deal with when I deal with Jehovah Witnesses, I'll say, "Hey, listen. It says over here in John. It says, uh, uh, no, uh, Thomas, my Lord, my God, and Jesus never rebuked him. And they get all angry. And, and I said, "Listen, Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord, my God, and you deny that he's God." Answer, and they'll go, no, 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 listen, shush, huh, huh, quiet. Explain to me what Thomas said. My Lord, my God. And there's no explanation, there's no reason for a commentary. It is what he professed, and Jesus took the proper title, the proper stance that Thomas had, because Jesus is Lord and God. And if you teach otherwise, not only are you a liar, but you are an antichrist. How'd you like to have that thing? Not the antichrist, you're a antichrist. See, there are other antichrists out there, according to John. But there is also the Antichrist. Chapter 4, verse 20, I think. Is that? No, don't worry. 420. 420. 
If a man say, I love God, and hate is his brother, he's a liar. So, and the brother here is your Christian, your fellow Christians. And that Christian brother can be in the local church that you go. It can be in your city, your county, your state, your country, or anywhere in the world. If you hate, profess to hate any Christian that is your brother, dead or alive, well, I, I can't believe what this Christian be. I can't believe what this Christian does. I don't like what he does. I can't stand that Christian. I, I don't want to have anything to do with that Christian. And then you turn around and say, I love God. The Bible records. You're a liar. How's that? Oh, me and God, we're one. We're, I, and I hate you. You're a liar. You're a liar when you hate your brother professing to love God. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God in whom he not seen? Again, I can say, I'm sorry, that's my cat. And who have seen, I mean, that brings it right in the local church. You go to church and, and there's a Christian over there and you don't like them. You hate them. For whatever reason, God says you're lying. Now listen, I know Christians and you know, all right, whatever reason, we just don't get together. Uh, I'm odd to them or they're odd to me. I don't hate them. I pray for them. I love them. And then, okay, you know, I really don't want to have anything. We don't have anything in common. That's not hatred. Hatred is when you defile that brother. And you don't want anything to do with him. You talk about him, whatever it is. And you always hold a grudge. But you turn around and say, I love God. You're a liar. 5.10, 1 John 5.10. He that believes on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. All right, you don't believe that Jesus came from God. You don't believe that God gave us Jesus Christ as the blood atonement, as the lamb. You don't believe in that. You have another God. You have another placement than Jesus. You have told God. And just like a scripture that everybody knows, John 3, 16, where it says, God, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. And you have another God, you have another Savior, or you are in the name of atheism. You said, as far as God in John 3, 16, you're a liar. And there are people out there that say, you know, Jesus is not of God. It will say Jesus is a liar. Jesus was a prophet again. Jesus is this. Jesus is that. Jesus, But God didn't send Jesus. You make God everywhere where it says God sent Jesus. Every place in the Bible, you make him a liar. You have added to the word of God. Remember Proverbs? So not only are you a liar by what God said, because you don't believe it. But you are a liar because you have now added to the word of God. And with that, you probably said, oh, I'm not a sinner. 
making God more of a liar. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And every time you come to the place where you go against what the scriptures say, be doers of the word and, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Well, I'm not going to do that part. We're going to have a new frango system. Okay, you're a liar. And you don't have to be in a business suit. You don't have to be in a career. You could be sitting in a pew Sunday morning and God look upon you and he sees you as a liar or God looks upon you and you are making God a liar. First Timothy. First Timothy. One ten. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for man stealers, for liars, for perjured, that's another stance of light persons, and if there be any other that is contrary to sound doctrine, wait a minute. Look at verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man, but for the lawlessness, disobedient, ungodly, and for sinners, for unholy, profane, and murderers of fathers, and murderers of mothers, for murderers. That was Satan. Remember John 8, 44? For men slayers. Well, the word liars, the person liars, has shown up in a list you don't want to be involved in. Let's say you had a neighborhood and you had all these houses in the neighborhood. And let's say you had houses where there was lawlessness. And there was a person, house of disobedience. What about there was a house on that street ungodly? Another house that was unholy and profane. What about there was a house murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers? There was a house or murder on the one street. And on that street is also liars. Would you want to live on that street? Would you want to be in that characteristic? And yet when God sees you as a liar, that's the street you're living on. Don't go on Holy Avenue. When you're living after the devil on Liar Lane. Titus. Titus 1.12. Of themselves, even the prophet of their own, their own prophets, their own people, said the Galatians, the creations are always liar, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. You, Christian, whether you know it or not, stand out as a liar. If that's who you are. Now, I know an unsaved man I worked with. This guy lied so much that he actually believed the lies he was telling to be true. And yet, of the company that worked with him, including myself, we knew his stories. We knew him to be lying. You stood out as a liar. And as your group work crew, we would testify to that. That's what's going on here. These people who are prophets 
of, of the they would say, hey, these creeds, they're just liars. Again, we, we, we go back to individuals, we go back to certain careers and all that. They're just liars. And the Bible goes on, Wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in faith. A love here for the liars is, you gotta, you gotta go in sharp, and you gotta browbeat them. This is not a time to go in with love and fluff. This is where we go and nail it down because they got a public testimony. You're a liar. That's not good because lying removes all trust. Lying. Soils your character. And if you are a Christian, your lies could be affecting your church. It could be affecting your family. It could be affecting your job. And it is surely affecting you. Revelation. Revelation. Two, two. I know thy works and their labor and thy patience. How thou cannot bear them which are evil, and has tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. So there are a bunch of people walking around saying we're apostles, we're apostles. They, the church, tried them. To prove them. And there was no proof. There was no truth. And we said, you know what? You're a liar. Anybody gets up in a religion. And makes profess. You know, I could take my office all the way back to, to Peter. You're a liar. Prove it. Show me the documentation that God said through Peter, by Peter, that you hold the office of the Apostle Peter. Which now give yourself the name Pope. There's, there's people out there, the Apostolic Church. You don't have the signs of the Apostle. You don't have the characteristics. To, there are three characteristics to be Apostle. Number one, you had to been with the earthly ministry of the living Jesus Christ. Okay? They're all dead. You had to see the resurrected Christ. The only way the church today is going to see Christ is when the rapture happens. And then you had to be baptized with the baptism of John. Well, that's done. If you don't have all three, you're not an apostle. Somewhere along the line, these people that were tried, they didn't have the testimony, whatever it was. And you're liars. You have got to call out these religious phonies. you got to call out the, the, these pastors that are in churches. I did that with one church, and he, man, the pastor got all mad at me because I sent people documentation about the Bible, the King James Bible versus any other Bible in the market. And boy, he got mad at me, and then he took off out of town real quick. I called him on who he was. I'm not afraid. If I'm right by the scriptures. Now we got chapter 21. Verse 8, I believe. But the fearful and unbelieving atheist and the abominable 
And the murderers. Oh, there's murderers. And the whoremongers. Oh, we saw that before. The sorcerers. Idolaters. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Well, look at that. The liars end up a place called the lake of fire that burneth. It will have said all liars. That means Christians. No, it doesn't. Stop taking the Bible out of context. Because 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, I have. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. I've been clean, I've been forgiven. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I have been cleansed. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ sh shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus. I received all that. I put my faith. I am not unbelieving. I'm a believer. I'm saved. God is my Father through, through Jesus Christ. By the Holy Spirit that dwells in me, my sins are put under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And where my sins are not been cleansed. I have not confessed them. They are wood, hay, and stubble, and they will burn up, but not will I burn up. But the unsaved liars who have never put their faith and trust in Jesus, that put their faith and trust in other things, put their faith and trust in religion, put their faith and trust in atheism, put their faith and trust in science and and, and in uh, education. Those liars will go off into the lake of fire that burneth forever and suffer the second death. So the end come for lost liars is the lake of fire. The end come for Christians that are liars is at the judgment seat of Christ, you will get wood, hay, or stubble which burns. You won't get a crown to be a lawyer. You will not get an inheritance for lying. You do not please God and the Son for lying. If it displeases God for the unsaved, Imagine what it is for these saved. My advice to you is, if you are a liar, if there are any lies to you, accredited to you, you better get them right, right now, under the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus could come anytime. Get them under the blood now. And if you're lost and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, right now, put your faith and trust in Him. Right now, call upon Him. That I need to be saved. I don't want to go to hell and be saved. 